That was crazy. Uh, okay, so quick blind pick. Uh, they're just going to launch from here. I don't know what the issue was. Maybe somebody disconnected or there's a rune error or I don't know. They loaded in with one hit point. Could have been anything, but we're just going to get this rolling again. And judgment number three will get itself underway. Five man jungle videos, Blaze. Really? I can't imagine that works unless you're doing search for Teemo or find the Teemo or whatever it is. Wah. Like how I went to the Shoutcaster group and it's like, hey, who wants to cast? And they're all like, with you? You. Okay, they didn't do that, but. Um, yeah, that's why I'm all alone tonight. Sad panda, Jester. Sad panda. Hello, Dr. Docker. How are you tonight? Yeah, zombie outbreak. Oh, got a hold on. Got to put a hold in this game, guys. Gotta go get himself the bat. Smack, smack. Alright, quick recap. Judgment number three, hosted by the Razor Weapon. I'm the Four Court Jester, just helping out tonight. Getting some of these guys some airtime, bringing their prowess to the world. Also, I get to play with the new spectator functions, so. Pretty happy about that. Pretty happy. Team left or team blue, TK Rain, the purple slash red team is going to be T, T Satsulo. I'm assuming that means Satsulo. I don't know what it means, but that's how I'm going to call him Satsulo. Unless T Sats means something that I'm not aware. Picks and bands went down. Let's see. We had Jax, Dr. Mundo, Cannon, Shen, Graves. Who was that fifth one? Who was that sixth one? I don't remember the sixth Ben, but they were all banned for good reason because a lot of them are really fearful kind of guys. But we did remake into our blind, so we got Ash, Janna, Yorick, Nocturne, and Zareth. And they're gonna be going up against the Udir, the Corky, the Vladimir, Blitzcrank, and Annie. Now, see, I saw some of you guys in the chat saying, you know, Zareth outranges Annie. True. Zareth is also kind of a glass cannon if you get in close. At level 6, it would be very interesting to see his ultimate go off. The triple fire versus Tibbers. I have a suspicion Tibbers will win, but it will come down to the skill level of both opponents. So we will have to see how they want to do that. Without recording. <laughs> everybody can cast. That's the good thing about spectator mode, guys. Everybody. But yeah, we're going to get this game started fairly soon. Looks like it's still in existence, so no problem. Why would you get in close with Zareth? Because you need to attack him. <laughs> like, he's going to outrange you, therefore you must get closer to him than his range if you want to attack him if he outranges you. That's simple math. My range is 5 and his is 10. I must get into range 5, which is technically half his range. But yeah, York up top up against the Vladimir will be Battle of the Sustains. Uh, it does look like Vladimir taking Ghost, whereas we do have Flash for the York, and as we did state previously, we do not have any Flash escape mechanisms for Corky. He's going to be solely relying upon Blitzcrank uh, to try to delay, as well as his Valkyrie to try to just stay alive. Uh, we do have the Flash on Ash, so she does have her escape mechanism. Otherwise, she would be up a creek without a paddle. We're going to see if my League of Legends f loads in full screen, and it does! Yes! Love it. I hate the corner bug. That corner bug sucks, man. It's really bad. Change it up to the lol spectator. Alright! Amethyst Ash, the Hextech Janny, Yorick Nocturne, and Battlecast Zareth. That's a really cool skin. I don't think I've seen that before. Up against the Udyr, the Earthrider Corky, Vladimir Blitzcrank, and Franken Zippers Annie. That's very scary. I like, I love her through the hair, the white dash, Alvira. Gives me chills. <laughs> cool down, suck, man. If we, they brought in the WTF mode for lol, be game over, just be Karthus hitting R all day in the fountain. Pew, pew, pew. But yeah. Team TK Rain against the Tatsulo here in League of Legends Judgment number three. This is the chill court jester tonight. Not going to get overly excited. Going to be having some fun here with these teams. And bam, we are in. Kind of. Goodbye, music. You were friendly. 
Hello, League of Legends. Is it me or is everything kind of pink? <laughs> Colorblind mode made all the towers pink. Okay, fair enough. Sound, music, bam. Ready to rock. So, this is actually, I think, my first set of casts since the new graphical update that went live last week. Gotta say, it's looking good. So in the top right red hand corner, Team Tatslow, they're going to head up top. Going to be trying to see if someone wants to come their way. Looking for that gank. You can see... Ooh, that's not what we want. You can see uh, Team TK Rain, blue. They're kind of doing the similar methodology here in the jungle. Now we have gone bush to bush. There we go, middle click. And are we going to have something of a bush war? Are we going to be leaving that that top? Are we going to go down this river? We are. We are going to do the jungle invade. No clairvoyance is used, ladies and gentlemen. This is purely the, by the gusto and by the size of their gonads that they're doing this. But look at that blitzcrank up out front, ready to hook in someone. We do got Udir ready for that stun. No, he didn't take the stun. He took the phoenix. Oh, the phoenix could be slightly deadly. But I think that the hook into the stun combo would have guaranteed a first blood. And uh, here we go. We're going to find someone. GR Freak. Oh, no. It's the Zareth. We got that Ignite ticking down, ticking down. He's going to drop low, but he will not go down. That was a good grab by uh, Team Red there at the end. But, you know, if we had that second stun, if we had that bear stance, Udyr probably would have given enough CC to land one more auto attack, one more skill shot onto our Zareth. But unfortunately, no, he will be getting away, and we are going to do some counter jungling right off the bat, denying the enemy Nocturne his blue. And I do believe Nocturne kind of is knowing of this. I mean, he, whole enemy team up north, you don't want to be going that way. He's going to start himself down here at race. He's going to look for invaders. Yep, Talon Bacon Hawk coming in here, supplying that vision, and we can now see in the lanes. You know, we do got our top, we do got our mid, we got one of the bottoms. So he's okay. He, he's feeling confident now. There's no counter warden auction going down, so there's no early wards. And Nocturne, he's a, he's a champion that can pick up that level 2 and uh, do that level 2 gank, which he might elect to do. As we did say, Corky does not have any kind of escapes other than Valkyrie, and at level 1, it's not really wise to pick up that, that Valkyrie. Not off the bat. Not at all. So... And uh, the Engan fiction in the mid. Zareth going to be throwing out his own stun. Here comes Nocturne. The flash from Annie was forced, so it's not exactly a loss. And uh, it's not a kill either. But next time that gank happens, I mean, she's already low as is. Next time that happens, we will not have that flash to rely on. Now we might have the counter coming in. Zareth going in really close. There's this flash stun. That bear stance, and that will be first blood going down to Udyr. That's going to help him out tremendously in the jungle. Has the blue, has the red. Was not able to pick anything up other than that kill, but first blood to your jungler, ladies and gentlemen. That is a scary, scary thought. Up top, you know, a little bit of our sustain wars. Here comes Udir again for gank number two. In two minutes, we do get the flash going off. He should, oh, pretty sure Tatslow should have been able to see that flash. But, you know, he has the enemy team right where he wants them on the defensive. This is going to be great news for Vladimir because Vlad not doing so good up here. Look, already pushed to his tower. He's, you know, he might be losing a lot of CS at this tower because, you know, he is level 3, he is AP, does not really auto attack, has to wait for those cooldowns, and Yorick just shoving him right into the meat grinder does deny him that gold. So excellent plays all around. Udir sitting at 10012, only started with those boots. Very gutsy move starting off with those boots. No extra armor, no life steal. You gotta be very confident in the jungle to be starting off with your boots in the pots, but it worked out great because he got the first blood, he was able to pressure top. And overall, he's doing work like a boss. Yorick up top does have 12 creep kills, whereas Vlad does have 18, so that meat grinder effect was very much mitigated because Vlad was able to have enough cooldowns, enough spam ability to grab him the CS. And now we do got Tatslow coming in, the red and the blue going down. Here's that Phoenix. We did get the stun off, and with the help of Vladimir, this will be kill number two going to PDX IMAX. And Tatslow. MVP to date. He is doing some phenomenal aggression tactics on his uh, on his team. Now we do got pings going down. We do notice our blue is still up. So Ngan Fiction 
aka Nocturne. He's going to come up here and he's going to be trying to steal this. Or is he going to give it to an Ash? No, okay. Ash is coming up for the support, making sure that if Udyr does show up, does not get a kill. What elo are these guys? I have no idea. But I do like the play of that uh, Udyr. He, I think he's doing phenomenal at this point. Now we did get ourselves a few shopping trips. I mean, Yorick did die, went back to town. No problem. He picked himself up a mana crystal. So I have to think if he's going to be going for that Chalice of Harmony first or if he's going to be going for more of a offensive style like the Mana Mune. Uh, my money is more on the Mana Mune, although a Chalice would not hurt at this point. We do got the double AP and he is against Vlad. <gasps> what a hook! Who's he with the hook making the big plays? Does have to force out that flash from the Talon Bacon Hawk. But it's excellent, excellent play like that from Blitzcrank that we do like to see more and more. While we're down here, let's take a quick look at the CS factor. 32 for Ash, 35 for Corky, and do you know, that's it's pretty much even. These guys are doing work. Now we are keeping the lane semi-pushed. This could become vulnerable for things like Tatsulo. Oh, who <laughs> went and got himself? Wow, he upgraded his boots and got an Oracle. He's going for that early map control. That is a very gutsy move because that's 400 gold he's not now spending on, well, items. I mean, he could have easily picked himself up a Dorn's Blade, a Dorn's Shield, part of uh, the part of a Regal's, you know? Could have easily been something like that, but no. He's saying, I want to shut these guys down hard. I'm going to get that Oracles. I'm already up 101. Apparently, my camera's stuck on this guy, so we just lost a kill. Let's go back. Bam. There you go. Talon Bacon Hawk getting pulled in yet again by that Blitzcrank. Beautiful play. Stupid camera. It's getting stuck on Udyr. A little rusty with the camera, so that's why we have live spectator. Woo! Alright, so. Bam. Back to live. Now we're all updated. Now this is very dangerous. Look at this TK rain down here. Has no idea who's he. Well, okay, he probably knows who's he's there. Has no idea where exactly. Getting right up to the bush. He's going to go for it. The overdrive coming out. Nope. Creep's getting in the way. It's going to stop you right in your tracks there, Blitzcrank. But overall, 3-0 right now. Tatsulo doing some amazing work. And now here we go. We're going to go on top of our Yorick. Yorick not looking so good. The flash stun from Udyr. And the big damage is coming out from Vlad. And the ignite will be enough for another kill on top of the Pizza Man. Poor Pizza Man. And uh, while well, all that was going on, we did have a kill mid. Let's go back very quickly. Zareth, well... Yorick was getting ganked up top. GR Freak is going to come in here, flashes in with the ultimate, gets off the stun and the triple combo, but it's not quite enough to finish off Heart. Oh, but the long range laser. Man after my own heart. Excellent placement right there. So he picks himself up that revenge kill, putting them now a kill on the board. Team TK Rain. That Zareth definitely a little bit uh, scary at this point, and he's only rocking the double Dorns. Now, instead of the double Dorns, it does look like a Blasting Wand came out for Annie. So, you know, a few, few less hit points might have made the difference in that fight. Now, you can see GR Freak just going to be trying to put some hurt here on a tat slow. And he is going to be a target for the rest of this game. He's up 102. That's a lot of gold to your name. Plus, you bought yourself that early, early Oracles. So the longer you keep that up, the more in the clear you are, but that also means that you're going to become an increasingly important target for Team TK Rain to take down. It was a pretty good Q snipe, wasn't it? Yeah. Ah, excellent plays. Now I'm afraid to go back to live because I don't want to miss anything, but you know what? We can just stay here. It's just like watching a movie. Uh, and that's that's one of the big things about this spectator client, I think, is uh, really doing itself justice. All right, so what are we sitting here? It's 4-1, Team Tatslo looking really good right now. They're up about 2K gold. Let's take a look at the individual gold numbers as people are just you know doing their farming circuit. 2,600 for both uh, Corky as well as Udyr. And, you know, not far behind, Vladimir and Annie, so they're really staying up there. But you can see we're starting to trail off a little bit. Yorick looking at about 1,600, so he's really far behind, a whole 1,000 gold behind his counter opponent. Whereas Ash, 2,300 versus the 27 that is now Corky. So that 0-2 Janna is really starting to put the difference in that lane. 
to a little bit of an unbearable degree. So, oh, Tawan Baconhawk trying to save TK Rain. In comes the Nocturne with the ultimate. The vision denial was really good, but no, Hoozy is going to be able to pick off that Ash, but he, he did pay for it with a Corky, and now it's not looking that good for Hoozy. He does have that uh, overdrive. He is going to be trying to get that off. Here comes his passive after the fear, and Tawan Baconhawk is going to be able to land the assist as uh, we do have Nocturne picking up that kill. In comes Tatslo, but it's just not going to be enough. And uh, he's going to be able to hold that lane, but it is a fairly pushed lane, so we did trade a 1 for 2 scenario. We did come out on top. Look at the kills! Oh, is that Ignite going to be enough? It will. So another excellent duel in the mid as uh, Zareth coming out on top again over top of Annie. So the gold difference in the middle looking at Zara, the 21060 creep case, that's about 3,000 gold. He's now starting to edge over top of Andy, who's sitting about the 2,800 mark. So that's going to be good for Zareth. I mean, he's now gone, upgraded the Sork Shoes, going to get himself a Sight Ward. That's going to be gobbled up here by Tatslow. And he does have the Triple Dorn, so that extra health makes him a little bit harder to gank, as well as gives him those offensive stats that he does need. And at the same time, Annie has had to be, you know, her hand's been forced. She still has the Tier 1 boots, and she's been into now a Ruby Crystal. So a Ruby Crystal and a Blasting Wand, I have to wonder if she's going for a Rod of Ages first, if she wants to tank up against the Zareth. Not necessarily a bad idea, considering she's uh, 0 for 2 in that regard, but here we go. GR Freak, he sees himself that bear, and the bear is going to be taking out that ward. As I said, it's free candy. How do I unlock a camera? There we go. I'm surprised there's no hotkey to unlock a camera. So, you know, a few minutes ago, we were sitting at 4-1. We're now sitting at 5-4. We're bouncing back very nicely here for TK Rain. And that puts us up about uh, 1.8k gold difference. It's still in advantage of Tatslow's team, the red team. And at this point, I gotta say, nothing is a done deal. Looking at some of our items, you know, it uh, does look like Freak going to be trying to take out uh, Annie, the Clutch Flash, at the end. Here comes Tatslow, and uh, he's not going to be able to pick up that Zareth, but Annie's just having a heck of a time in this mid lane. She cannot seem to go one-on-one -on -one up against Zareth whatsoever, but she did avoid dying this round. Unfortunately, next time she won't have that Flash, and that's exactly the kind of advantages you need to build yourself in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You might have survived this round, but you can even see him harassing out that Udyr in that mid. Udyr cannot even get close, and he's already blown that Flash, trying to get the, the revenge. Here comes the Crystal Arrow. Okay, from Ash, a little bit random, a little bit unexpected. Don't know if that was really meant for bottom or if that was meant for, for mid. Udyr's a tough character to crack, though. He does have Mercury Treads, so any kind of stuns. Oh my goodness, Bacon Hawk. Good night, sweet Prince. You got your ultimate off, but unfortunately, true damage will eat up all that heal. So say lovey. Either way, that puts us now 4-6. You know, 2k gold difference, still hardly done. But Tatslow here, the hero of his team, still has yet to die. 102 still has that Oracles. And you can see he's really denying a lot of map vision to TK Rain. And that map vision, I mean, that's all important. There's two things in this game that are really important. And that's vision and movement speed. If you don't got no vision... That was an excellent attempt at a snipe, but unfortunately, did not go down. We had no vision. That's where clairvoyance comes in very nicely. It's undeniable vision. You cannot deny it. The only way to deny it is to kill the guy who cast it, and it has to be not on cooldown. That's the only way you're ever going to get that. But a good dragon, 13 minutes, 50 seconds in. We should see another one around the 20-minute mark. Not a problem. 14 minutes in. That's cool. That extra global gold puts us up about another K, and again... This Zareth, man, doing work against Annie. She drops for a 0 for 3 score. No kills to her name. You can see her trying to p complete that catalyst. There we go. She has the catalyst now. So trying to tank up. I'm still convinced that she's going to go for that Rod of Ages. But 
you know, it might become too little too late. We got a lot of offensive stats on that Zareth, and now with a 3-1 score, he's rocking 3,900 gold, which is pretty close to the level that Tatsilo's at right now. I mean, him and uh, Vladimir just farming those lanes very nicely, but the king right now, 110 creeps. Corky with two kills and an assist to his name. That's a lot of gold to give a Corky, and that is very frightening because he does have that BF sword advantage over top of Ash. Now, this could be really good. Tatsilo, I don't know why we revealed ourselves with that auto attack GR Freak. I really don't, but Nocturne is going to be able to pick up the assist as Freak was able to take down the kill, finally taking down that Oracles, and that will be that. That's all she wrote for Tatsilo, finally getting put down into the ground. Now, we have pushed out our bottom lane. We're going to be taking out some of these creeps, and, uh, you know, TK Rain at this point has himself the double door, and so he has a little bit of lifesteal. He does have those shields from Janet. It's a good choice to take out those golems, especially if your jungler is not going to be uh, anywhere near them. He, they'll just respawn by the time he gets back to them. And you can see Zareth doing work in the middle. I'm a little surprised Zareth didn't, uh, didn't pick up anything bigger than what he has at this point. He just got himself some wards, or er, some potions, and uh, he's doing fine. You can see the, the range that he's keeping Annie at. She's very afraid to come in here to CS, and bam, that's exactly the reason why. You get that extended range, you get that attack, and she's just going to start getting chunked. Cat catalyst or no, she's going to get jumped, and uh, that that's not so good for her. The good news is she's at 88 creeps, so somehow she's still beating out a Zareth. What is that sneaky Vladimir doing over there? Going to have to keep my eye on that, but Nocturne here in the bottom. It's not going to matter. GR Freak does get uh, Tibbers dropped on top of him. Oh no, here comes the Ghosted Vlad, and that is going to be the shutdown streak on top of Zareth. Now we do got uh, you know a counter reward, a nice counter reward going in there. Out goes the tornado. Janna just a little bit too late to save that. But three mid. This could be the, actually the death of a tower. Are we actually going to push in that hard? I don't know. Oh, what a grab on top of TK Rain. Does he have the flash? He does have the flash. He did get silenced. So uh, the ultimate from Janna helping to aid that escape. Here goes Nocturne into the mid. Going to be trying to land on top of Annie. Because she does have... Oh, she had that flash up. Nocturne was betting that she didn't. I mean, Tibbers was already down. Wasn't too much more he could do to her. But that flash, man, coming up just at the right moment. So it does look like it was a heavy... Heavy aggression onto that mid. Talon Baganhawk yet again getting grabbed right through those creeps. Not looking good for him and his ratio of dodging those hooks from Blitzcrank. But this is what you need to do as a Blitzcrank. You need to go offensive. Otherwise, you're just letting them sit there and you are not applying the pressure you need to. It's just like in any other MOBA with that hook, you know, Pudge, Devourer, that scary, scary kill potential of having a hook and just ending your life. That is the kind of fear you need to instill upon your opponents. It's like playing Shaco in a solo queue game. It's like, could he gank me at any time? Yes. Do I got to play more defensive because of it? Yes. And I think Blitzcrank is doing that uh, very well right now. Blitzcrank does have an Oracles ready to rock. He hasn't used it yet. Uh, let's actually go check out Tatslo. Tatslo has not actually rebought one. He's going to focus now a bit more on stats. He does have the dual gold pretends going up. Does have himself that no magic mantle. So he's doing okay. Now here comes Zareth up top. We're going to be actually forcing that pool out very easily. Pizza Man going to come in here. Going to be trying to just provide that vision for that Zareth. But oh! They're going to trade one for one. Pizza Man with the ultimate. It's not going to matter. He's just going to sit here, farm up a little bit, and then just die like the puppet without strings that he's about to become. Shablamo. And it does look like Bacon Hawk got grabbed yet again. I'm going to click on Blitz, and yeah, Rocket Grab Ultimate Power Fist. That Janna, man. That Janna has got to learn how to dodge those hooks. But yeah, it does look like we've had a little bit of a shift. Tatsilo's team has decided that they want to go balls to the walls aggression. So we've taken out the mid turret. We're now camping the jungle. Nocturne's going to walk right into this. Who's he with the fist? And now, oh, it's going to be a death to freak. I assume. There we go. <laughs> Gonna say there's no way Zareth can get out of that, and because we now have the show of force in the jungle, TK Rain himself, after losing a little bit of a poke war up against Corky, does have to back off, and this is going to be the death of another tower. So this big offense coming out from Tatsilo's team is denying a lot of map vision. I mean, let's take a quick look. F1, 
This is what we can see right now. This is what TK Rain can see. You know what? I'm going to pause it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This is what they see at this point. A, we've had an Oracles running around pretty much majority of this game. Right now, it is on Blitzcrank. It used to be on Tatsilo. Tatsilo died. Doesn't matter. We got one ward in here, and I'm very surprised that Blitzcrank did not take out this ward because they did see it go down. They must have had red in their eyes because they wanted that kill on top of Zerath. I think they blew two flashes and a few ultimates just to get that kill, but it was worth it to them. So this ward aside, we got nothing here. We got nothing offensive. We got nothing in the forests, in the rivers, nothing. This is what we can see for Tatsulo. And Tatsulo's team, again, rocking that oracle. They've really been on top of these wards. They got these offensive wards in the jungle. They got them down here by the creeps. They got, uh, you know, the two towers in this mid. The only ones left are this top one. But so far, Vlad's not having really that hard a time destroying this top. He's up 50 creeps over Yorick, who's 0-3. Vlad 4-1. So he's he can push that whenever he wants. He can win one-on-ones. He can, as you did, did see, trade very evenly in a 2 one one situation. So it's looking overwhelmingly good right now for Tatsulo's team. 19 and a half minutes in, we're waiting for that dragon. That dragon is going to pop <laughs> right there. <laughs> to about the 20 minute mark is I believe what I said uh, based upon 1950. So it looks like it was at the 1350 mark. They're going to get this. It's going to go uncontested. Bam. We saw the Yorick and that is one dead Yorick. Silence is coming out. Oh, he had to burn the flash with the ignite. The ignite. So called it one dead Yorick and he burned his flash for it. That's why wards are so important. Vision, man, you got a blitz crank. He can pull you through stuff. It's very scary. 11 7 right now. We're up about 7k gold over top of TK Rain. Uh, it's not quite surrender yet, but it at this trend, it's really going to be going that way. Now, the sole savior right now on TK Rain, 5-3 Zerath. 5-3 Zerath has himself the triple Dorans into the needlessly large. He's at 169, uh, well, AP. That, that's, that's not huge, but it, it's good enough. Now, we get the tower. We get ourselves a kill on top of Lad, but we do pay for it. With that Nocturne, Freak and Bacon Hawk are going to have to just haul oh, ass. Oh my goodness, who's he almost landing that hook? Would have been pretty epic to take out TK Rain right there. But they're going to trade it one for one, and we did get ourselves a Revenge Tower. We're down two dragons. That dragon dropped about the 20-minute mark. We should see the next around 27. So we got some time to play. What are we going to do here for Tatsulo's team? Well, we just lost Vlad. That's okay. Vlad went back. 20-minute mark. Has himself that Rabadons. He does have himself a Hextech. That is a really good position for Vladimir to be in. Because he can go and farm that top. He can push it. He can go into the jungle. And he's going to get all of his health back. And all he has to worry about are those cooldowns. That Rabadons is going to put him, I'm going to say, probably with that... Uh, with the Hextech as well as runes, let's say 250 AP. Bam, 316, even higher. So despite the excellent start that Zareth has, he's only sitting at 206. Vlad, however, the farming machine that he is, up top 316 with 148 creeps. Yorick is still struggling to even meet 90 creeps. So yeah, it's 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 looking good. Tatsulo's team is looking really good. We got a three push coming up top and a two invade down here. We do got no wards again here as well, but there's a very offensive one placed by our blue. Blitzcrank is able to put up the pressure, keep these guys away as our three man takes out the tower. Very excellent pushing tactics. Now here's a key thing right now. I'm going to pause this. Bam, paused. We're in these bushes. We have no idea that they're in those bushes. And here's also a fun thing. We don't know where they are. They just took out our tower, and Ash is farming bottom. Um, so at best, you're going to initiate here five on four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> There's five of them right here, and they're going to have the hook advantage. They're, in 10 seconds, they're going to have a static field. They're going to have the hook. 
They're going to get these silences. Earth Rider with the Infinity Edge and Zeal is going to start tearing through them if they go any farther. Let's see if they go any farther. Well, Bacon Hawk certainly is not going to be <laughs> increasing his dodge, uh, his dodge rating at this point, but another very quick kill. And again, now, best they can do, 5 on 3 up top. Excellent time to take a Baron. Excellent. Y you cannot say no to this. Let's speed it up. Let's slow it down. Alright, so we try to engage. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't steal that Baron. We got the Yorick ultimate on top of himself. Oh, that was silly Vlad sitting right there. We got the crystal arrow going down. Double kill with the Tibbers. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Blue team is probably yelling at Janna. You're quite right. 152. Uh I don't think has dodged a single hook. But again, you don't the, the best they could have done there is 5 on 3 and that's exactly what they did. 5 on 3, the crystal arrow came out. It missed everything. I think there could have been a little bit more better communication there. Like you, you shouldn't engage a five on three, especially with your AD missing. Yes, sure, Ash, you were pushing that bottom. Now you're flashing to kill Annie. You're not even going to get it, which is unfortunate. You do have an IE by 23 minutes. That's great, but you're zero one three with 175 creeps. Commendable creep count, but that's because you were left alone farming at the bottom. While you were farming bottom, you lost a tower, four teammates, and a baron. I would call that opportunity cost a little bit too much to repeat. I mean, we're low enough as is in the game. We're 10,000 gold down. It's 16 to 9. Tatsulo's team is looking really good. Plus and minus. Alright, so we're going to let the directed camera just take care of everything. We're going to speed back up. Alright, Hoosie comes in. Takes a lot of flack from Zareth. We do got the flash come out from Talon Baconhawk, who probably shit his pants as soon as he saw uh, <laughs> that Blitzcrank. But I would have to say, again, Red got the clear out of that fight because we did force that flash. We now have the Zareth ultimate down. This is going to be perfect opportunity to push down this mid. Zareth does not have an ultimate. That's a long range ultimate that I don't think they really could have afforded to uh, re spend as they did. So he's still going to try the poke war. Yorick went up top. He took out a turret. So it is going to be a trade for a turret. But TK Rain going to get caught out. He's going to drop. End faction. Oh, there's no exhaust. Or there's no ignite. So he's cool. Clutch though. Oh my goodness. He has almost single digit hit points at this end. There we go. Yes, we dodged one. Talon Bacon Hawk. One dodge up for seven deaths. Five deaths. <laughs> one for seven. Still, this is some pretty big aggression coming out. It's totally in Tatsulo's favor at this point. They can just sit here with that Baron. Baron, still another whole 60 seconds left on it. And you can see the dodge, or you can see the poke coming out from Freak, but it's not going to be enough with the Tibbers dropped on your head. And the double comes out. Oh my goodness. And now defending 5 on 3 against a Baron team who's up 19, 9, and 12. Thousand. That is definitely a turret. That is definitely an inhibit. If Hoosie has his way, it's definitely another kill. Is it going to be his way? Yes, he is going to grab that York. He does have to flash on out. He's going to be alive just barely. He has an ignite taken down on top of him as well. But overall, it's not looking good for TK Rain, man. TK Rain. Let's speed this back up. Game is still going, so we got about two minutes of footage to catch up on. They're going to take out a dragon, no problem. 2640. Should see another one about the 3340 uh, mark, so no problem there. We're defending, we're defending, there's some wards. Can make that a song. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm there weren't any words. <laughs> because Tatsu low. That worked out pretty good. Alright, so we're playing a little bit of a dance. The Baron has now faded off. People are just farming and farming and farming. Let's take a, uh, before anything, let's take a quick pause. Udir, at this point of the game, 27 minutes in, he should be a tanky beast. And I'd say that that's about right. Let's take a quick look. Wit's End. Randwins, he does have the Mercury Treads, so, you know, silences, stuns, not going to be as good. 164 armor, 121, magic resist. Excellent to see, 27 minutes in. Corky is scary. 
very good right now. Infinity Edge, Last Whisper Phantoms, and of course the two Dorans from early game. He's sitting at 227 creeps, the most in the game with 8 kills to his name, ladies and gentlemen. That is a total of 11,000 gold, really surpassing his peers. That is huge. Vladimir is apparently not going to be in this fight, but at this point, I'm surprised he hasn't gone for the Will of the Ancients. But at the same time, Andy doesn't really feel like a champion that really is going to benefit a lot from that Will of the Ancients. So, it does look like a Rylize is going to come out for him. He already has that Revenant's 400 ability power. Pretty ridiculous. Who's he? Doing a great job of support. He has that Cherilias. Good on him. Has a lot of wards. That's exactly what he wants. Looks like a Frozen Heart going to be coming out. And of course the Boots of Mobility for the ganking purposes. And that leaves us with Annie who's sitting at that measly 274. Never bothered. Okay, there it is. There it is. The Rod of Ages did come out. And at that Rabidons, if she's lucky, by 30 minutes. And she only needs 500 gold. So, you know, after, maybe after these next few kills she'll have it. Let's see what happens. Hoosie's going to be finding Pizza Man, who gets chunked down by Corky. My goodness. Um, yeah. That was two crits of 520 each. That was some massive damage in a very short amount of time. Now, GR Freak has actually anchored himself, which is probably going to be his demise. Yeah, he's going to go back to the turret. No, we're going to get a flash in. Bear stun and the dual kill. Tatsulo uh, is able to rank that one home. And this means a death of a tower yet again. That's a pretty decent creep wave. That means that tower is not going to be attacking us. And we're in a position again of a 3 versus 5. 3 versus 5 defending sucks. I've been there. I've done that. It sucks. And we're just going to take that opportunity to push down. Red team going to come in. Here, look at this Hoosie just scattering them like ants to a magnifying glass. And that means that second inhibitor is going to be on the roster, on the menu. Served. Best served cold. Oh, that was a, that was a fail hook there, Hoos, but that's all right. Two inhibitors down. We're now... Did we ultimate TK rain? We did TK <laughs> ultimate TK rain. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, yeah, Ash is down, but uh, here she is with her free life. She's just going to come up here. We'll get the shutdown spray with the help of Zareth. So now we do got the whole full-fledged defense. The double kill comes out for Zareth, that massive range. And here comes that Nocturne trying to keep them in range. We're going to be trying to go for the Hoozy, but he is so bloody tanky at this point that he should be able to get out of this with that overdrive. No problem. Tatsulo going to double back and actually go for the stun on top of Pizza Man. Here comes Hoozy with the hook. No. Where's the hook, Hoozy? Hoozy with the hook. No. Would have been awesome to see that kill, but instead we pick up that, that ward. So again, another thing. We have this Oracles on Hoozy. He's had it since, what, the 12 minute mark? About the 12 minute mark. So Hoozy has been denying all that map pressure again. Let's take a quick look. That's what we can see. We have one ward that has not been killed. This is what we can see for the enemy team. A whole hell of a lot more. 30 minutes into the game, 23 to 12. We're uh, still up about 12k gold over top of TK rain. Tatsulo's team definitely has a big item advantage. We can actually see the Wheel of the Ancients now finished off as well as that Rabadons. And we're just going to speed it up to the Baron. Here comes the Crystal Arrow. The Baron does not get smited out, but we are going to be able to take down at least Corky. So that's a huge taking out of that fight. We do pay for it with Nocturne, who I think used his ultimate. No, he was on cooldown. Unfortunate for him, PDI Max able to take out Bacon Hawk and Ash able to actually get a little bit of a revenge kill. GR Freak is going to be dropping. And that leaves Pizza Man and TK Rain to go two on three. But is it going to be enough? No, Hoozy with the silence able to bring us our first ace of the game and this could be a push to win right here who's the Tatsulo PDI Max are gonna be coming in coming in coming in there's no inhibitors there's no inhibitors okay there's one inhibitor but it doesn't matter we got the other one down we're gonna take it down just for good measure we're not gonna be able to push to win are we gonna be able to get oops there we go we are able to get the turret so that's huge because now we got two sets of uh, super minions now bringing their weight down upon this one which only has 1900 hit points so last ditch defense coming out from TK rain but it's not looking good whatsoever they're really kind of forced into the corner 28 14 <laughs> Tatsulo taking the red 
like a boss that he is. Looks like the game does end in the next two minutes. Looking at the timer there. The typical defenses go down. It's just uh, accelerated again. Enemy red team, a last shopping spree. You can see some bigger items coming out. The GA for Corky. We do got the force of nature for Udir. We got that Rylai's now finish up for Vlad. The ice heart, frozen heart for, for Hoozy and... Overall, it was very well played. I think that uh, Tatsulo kind of did set the tone for this entire game. PDI Max going to be uh, getting really low. Is going to go out from the back. Is going to use that with the Ancients to heal up. Not a kill goes down on top of Tatsulo's team. TK Rain just has to kind of run for it in the back. A great hook from Hoozy landing on top of Nocturne. Nocturne will drop and that will be our second ace. A 5 for 0, no less. And that will be the third inhibitor and the push to win. GG well played to both teams. And congratulations to TK Rain for moving on here in League of Legends Judgment number three. That means we have another game ready to go. And I do not believe that this is a double elimination bracket. So that does mean it is going to be a good game for TK Rain. Glad that uh, they were able to enter into the tournament. It was uh, definitely a learning experience, I think. Uh, you know, big thing to take away from that. We had Oracles pretty much 100% uptime on, on Tatsulo's team. That's a lot of map control that you give up. And at the same time, it's nothing that you can really afford. I mean, they were able to use that map control to get all the dragons, all the barons. They were able to put down wards in the jungles. I mean, that's how we had a few of those hooks from, from Blitz. It's just like we can see up that hill or we can see over that cliff and we can see exactly what you're doing. Let's bring back some of that music. So, you know, I hope that you guys can take a little bit of something from that. Vladimir, of course, was able to farm like a boss in that top lane. The York just was not really able to put up a really good fight up there. And, you know, I don't think I ever saw Nocturne gank top. So, you know, maybe just something that you got to work out with communication-wise. So, either way, good games, well played. We're going to see what we can do for another game here on League of Legends Judgment number three. I'm going to hit up the admins and we will bring you the next one. So, and the four core jesters, stick around, not going anywhere. <laughs>